Hey, what's up guys? I, uh, I've been wanting to make this video for the longest time. It's a bit of an unusual story, but basically my iPhone 10 kind of bit the dust, uh, strip of the digitizer died and I couldn't use it anymore. So while that was being repaired, I had a thought. I, what if I just use the original iPhone for a day? And I've always wanted to do it. Uh, then AT&T killed the 2G network and that wasn't possible anymore. So now, um, now it really made me think, how can, I, how can I get it to work? Maybe possibly use it for a day since I never got to experience that way back in the day. And um, so here's the, here's the subject. And I got a story, quite the story to tell you about how we actually got service on this thing. So um, as you guys can see, it does have service on it now through T-Mobile and I actually kind of want to tell you how before I get into the using part. So, you know, I went around several T-Mobile stores. First off, I unlocked this thing. I had to jailbreak it, unlock it uh, using some very old programs, Red Snow. If you guys remember that throwback, those uh, old boot loop days and the bootloaders flashing that. So I had to unlock this thing and I actually got Cydia on it. And, you know, in order to get any kind of service on it, you have to be unlocked. And T-Mobile is the last carrier that has GSM 2G in America. Uh, that's going away in 2020. So I have a very narrow window here to make this video. Wanted to do it today. So um, let's go ahead and see what it's like to use one of these in a daily life in 2018. Can you do it? Obviously it's gonna be painful, but to what extent? You know, What kind of luxuries are we so used to nowadays that uh, people back in the day considered to be cutting edge that we wouldn't even think twice about now? Um, so yeah, I just wanna I want to go through that for one day and so I'm actually it's a very interesting story if you guys ever want to get one of these activated which none of you will but we weren't able to with new sims they show up invalid and only old sim cards work with this if you have t-mobile problem is you can't activate any of them anymore they have an expiry date so this is a t-mobile reps sim card he let me borrow just for this video so shout out to you thank you so much for that that was cool of you and now I can get calls and texts and hopefully I don't reveal his number on this video. Um, but anyways, just follow me throughout about a day, maybe two of my life with the iPhone. We'll see where uh, we butt heads, where we're not able to do what we want to with this guy. All right, so the first comparison I'd like to make is to the phone we're used to, the iPhone 10. Look at the difference, not only in size, but in clarity. I mean, uh, here are the backs, strangely reminiscent of each other, still have the iPhone text, still have the Apple logos the cameras which have grown you know tremendously this one had a different plastic back aluminum versus the glass so there's that massive difference in displays and at the time this was revolutionary i mean 3.5 inches compared to all the tiny blackberry displays and flip phones and whatnot it may seem small but at the time it was pretty great for uh, what it was you know, it's going to be very difficult adjusting to this guy after that large display on the iphone 10. Now, it's not as slow as you'd think. Yes, it's slow. It's, it has 128 megabytes of RAM, a Samsung-made processor. So it'll definitely take some getting used to to launching applications and having them be quite slow. This camera is two megapixels. And, you know, you wouldn't know it. It actually takes pretty decent photos unless you're in a low light environment. Then we have a lot of bloom up in the light over there. And very, very shaky here. It's hard to get an actual good photo without a stabilizer on the camera. No video, of course, but we'll get to that in a minute here. So before the days of iMessage, you just had SMS. And the actual icon back in the day was way different just to represent that. Then they changed it to messages. It used to be SMS. And hey, it did send a text message. So I sent text and made a call on the original iPhone in a 2018. My dad's actually in Canada right now, so let's see what he's up to. How strange does this look? Little tiny little phone next to your ear. Hey Javis, what's up? You're on YouTube right now. What are you guys doing in Canada? Uh, we're shopping, I guess. Shopping, nice. Where'd you guys go to, uh, Victoria? Yeah. Nice. Sorry I couldn't come, I had to film this video. It's my little brother, by the way. He's saying hello to YouTube. <laughs> this was a terrible experience, by the way. It was so quiet. Have fun. All right, so we're out of the wilderness. We're gonna go see how this thing interacts with modern technology. What can we connect it to? And the Bluetooth audio is gonna be my big one. Can we connect it to AirPods or some headphones, your car? The cool thing is CoverFlow still exists in the iPod application, not even music, iPod. Even modern smartphones do not have this. How cool is that? Get these cool animations, graphics, all on 128 megabytes of RAM, baby. That is impressive what they could juice out of this guy. Did you get it? 
Yeah, definitely say goodbye to any smart appliances or any sort of smart thing, as this smartphone is not that smart. I'd basically be locked out of my house if it weren't for the pin code that uh, you have as a backup. So iPhone is a no-go for home or smart home compatibility already. We're building a new PC. Uh, this thing is gonna be a million times faster than this iPhone. So I'm on Edge and Edge is absolutely awful. Downloading or trying to download anything will take an eternity. I honestly, I commiserate with anyone that actually grew up with one of these. I do not know how you do it. How in the world would you wait through something like this? I get it, I have two bars here, but that is just, just awful. All right, sorry about the jungle of wires here. You have no idea how much work I've been doing just to get these up and running. Now, the one I'm using, the Wi-Fi is busted on it, so I have to use another one just for the Wi-Fi. And Wi-Fi is noticeably faster than the Edge network. You can, you can actually live with it, especially the websites. You do not want to be using Edge uh, to load stuff. But, okay, let's go ahead and see if we can get a download going here. Oh, it just started to download, how? Pretty much 99.99% of all apps will not be working. Back when it was called Peekaboo, oh my goodness, will it work? Uh, yeah, so you can't really connect. You can download an older version of the app, but it will not let you go as far as to connect. This came out with the iPhone, it's called the Bluetooth headset. And in a way, it was like modern AirPods. Now, obviously you couldn't really stream music off of this, or at least I don't think, but the design was so, I think, advanced for the time. They were very, very similar, very slim. This is 11 years ago, mind you, and they were still able to get you know, a very similar form factor here. So this is just strictly for calls, and I actually wanna test out uh, if we can get that to work right now. The way it works, and this is kind of ingenious, there was a software control for it. If you plug them in together on the dock that was included with this, there it is. So that's a very nice integration. Now it's connected, and I'm gonna go ahead and make a call. Back when Bluetooth was in the general settings, not on the first page. So here is this Bluetooth headset. And oh, we do have to click the button on it. Connected, cool. So let me try this on. Let's see if it works. Hello. It does work. I can actually hear through it. It's kind of quiet. Hello. Wow, I'm honestly very impressed at how good the quality is. Um, it's very, very quiet, but you can make out the details. And let's hear on this guy. Hello. Yeah. You can actually hear a pretty good amount aside from that. Let's try AirPods with this guy. Not a chance. Okay, YouTube. Let's try you out. What does it take? 9.0. Now, lucky for us, we do have YouTube on this guy and cannot connect. Yeah, so the servers will not connect. Apple had a contract at one point in time to have the YouTube app built in. Unfortunately, that's no longer the case. I mean, you can check the weather on this thing, which loads very fast. You don't get the detailed breakdown like you do nowadays. You can go ahead and, of course, use a calculator or scientific one here. And the iTunes store no longer works. Basically, what you're left with is some light navigation. Check the stocks, see how you're doing. By the way, Apple had a legendary day today. It's crazy. So in one day, they jumped, well, like four or five bucks. Oh, let's check out the uh, Wi-Fi on 2G. Let's see what that's like comparing to a modern day iPhone. This is what's pretty infuriating is actually typing. It hangs sometimes. It's such a small cramped keyboard here. One, two, this is LTE versus Edge. Cannot open page. Let's try Apple again. And yeah, this is near instant. This is gonna take some getting used to certainly over Edge. Over Wi-Fi, of course, it is better, but you know, you gotta be a very patient man to browse and look something up here. I, I honestly could not go through with this for any more than a day, like this is pure torture. Just to load YouTube, not even a video, just the site, at least two minutes. That's pretty miserable. Let's see what the performance is like actually using a website. Scroll too far, take some time to render the pictures. But the scrolling is very smooth, I'm very surprised. And the fact that Apple's website still conforms to this tiny display, they're sticking true to their roots. And YouTube does not work. Now the only way you're actually gonna be able to check social media, which you know you can't live without, is through Safari. Let's take a look at, oh wow, Safari is actually pretty quick compared to Edge on this. Yeah, no social media, that doesn't show up either. So you are locked out of videos, no YouTube, 
No social media, just to give you a picture here. You can't download iTunes music. The only way you can even get music on this is through syncing a library, downloaded library through iTunes. Yeah, you're pretty lonely using this thing. Pretty lonely, locked out of the world, and that kind of sucks. Okay, so disaster has struck. Current location cannot be found. So we're gonna have to print off the map quest directions here and drive off of that. First order of business, let's connect to the Bluetooth player because I can't drive without music. No way. This is connected to my Audi. Let's see what we can do with it. Here's a problem. There's nowhere to stream to. Now, I'm not gonna lie. I honestly thought that this would be so much easier. It's just that everything doesn't work anymore. The services, uh, even Google Maps craps out on you. It doesn't actually find your location or that could be a fault with the phone. You know, I'm not able to stream music to my car. It's just like those little comforts that you get day to day that you're not getting here anymore and that's what makes it annoying. Yeah, I can call, I can text, but how often do I even do that? It's it's all the other things that you're missing on this social media, uh, Reddit, just everything else that you can't do, which gets annoying. Sure, you can live with this, but do you want to? That's the question. This is what I thought cool people were like when I was a kid, guys that had little Bluetooth headphone headsets in their ears. This one doesn't even stay in that well, but all right. Uh, I'm gonna go give the SIM card back and get some footage, see what kind of camera this thing has at least when recording video. And it's totally cheating. This thing is not meant to record video, but hey, if you can hack it, why not? This phone was never meant to record video, but you can still do it with this jailbreak tweak called Psycorder or app. And it allows you to record at a reduced frame rate, but still watchable video on the original iPhone. Check out these tomatoes. We've got a massive one over here ridiculous check out the new setup by the way we got the small hd oled i'm surprised the video's pretty watchable on the original iphone very very green lots of color in here oh hey buddy the panther how you doing buddy the best cat in the world wow look at that detail purple flower, the frame rate is just not that great here, but still pretty watchable. At the time you had no other choice. Most cameras were like this. This was actually pretty good. Oh, we got turkeys. Let's check them out. Get some low light in here. Whew. Look at this guy. Look at this dinosaur. Wow. Dude, the iPhone 10's quality is insane how good it is. That is ridiculously good. I can't even imagine uh, later this year, I mean, in less than a month, what the new one's gonna be like. That's crazy. So low lights still does okay. That's where you start to see the limitations of the original iPhone for sure. Yeah, we got a lot of bees. Sorry for anyone that's afraid. Gotta get in real close there. Okay, so that concludes that. Yes, you can do video if you go through some hoops. The frame rate is terrible. It's totally doable, not impossible. All right, guys, so after spending roughly a day with this guy, I literally cannot. Like, a week would honestly be a form of punishment. So, yeah. So, yes, you could use it in 2018 until the 2G network is discontinued from T-Mobile in less than two years. But why would you subject yourself to that? So iPhone 3G next, maybe let's see what life is like with that. I feel like it'd be so much better. So many new functions added and speed. Um, but yeah, it was fun. It was nostalgic. I can say that I've texted and called from the original iPhone now and nobody else can really do it unless you jailbreak and have the specific SIM card for it. Man, that was a headache. Believe it or not, you can't just go out and do it without a lot of hackery. But all right, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this little journey with the original iPhone. It was a lot of fun making this video. Peace.